Two labs ago, we looked at the pulse of our heartbeat using light reflected from our finger onto a phototransistor. Today, let's instead use uh, electrodes that we put on our wrists to pick up the voltage that comes from our heart that echoes throughout our body and amplify that to see maybe some more interesting shapes to the waveform that happens every time our heart beats. So, uh, a little background. Here is one of us. And uh, we have uh, right a heart in the middle of our chest. And some part of our heart generates an electrical signal that triggers the heart muscles to contract uh, at the right moment to effectively pump blood throughout our body. Um, that electrical signal can be seen throughout our body because our body is kind of like one big conductor. Um, so what we can do is we can add electrodes to our body, and this is typically done in the medical field across the chest, but we'll simplify things and go from wrist to wrist. So um, as one side of the heart electrifies and it pulses down the other side of uh, our chest to the other side of the heart, um, one side of the body will be a little bit more positively uh, electrified than the other. So um, we can see the difference uh, in the voltage between the, like, the left side of our body and the right side of our body and amplify that to, to see that uh, pulse as it goes across our heart. Um, so if we have uh, that uh, set of voltages, we're going to go into an amplifier and a set of filters. And that will give us uh, that classic waveform that you've probably seen if you've ever watched like a, a TV show that involves medicine, uh, the little device next to the person that's on the hospital bed, P, Q, R, S, T, you know, this like classic up-down pulse every time the heart beats. Um, and if you want, you can actually put this into some kind of speaker and then hear a bub-up every time it happens, but we're not going to do that in this particular lab. Um, one thing they don't really show here um, is that we need to be grounded in 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 order to um, see uh, the voltage so we're going to talk about what that means um, and we're going to use a specific kind of amplifier here so the amplifier is going to be an instrumentation amplifier which is of course just uh, a set of op amps but it's usually easier to buy a chip that is an instrumentation amp instead of building one okay so um, Let's dig into this a little bit more. Uh, we are going to have um, a, uh, let's say, a left electrode and a right electrode. So those are my uh, electrodes attached to my wrists. Um, and they're going to come into this instrumentation op amp, which works a little differently than a normal op amp. It still has a positive and negative input. It still has a plus five and a minus five volt uh, input. It also has a pin called ref. And then two more pins, uh, where should I draw these? I'm going to draw these over here, R plus and R minus. Okay, so in one 8-pin uh, dip chip, we have one instrumentation op amp. And of course, it has a V out. So in this case, uh, the V out is going to equal the gain, which for this particular op, uh, instrumentation op amp is 1 plus 100K over R. Um, and that's going to be times, I'm going to put it down here, uh, the plus uh, minus V minus, um, and then the whole thing shifted by ref. Let's see, that happens after the gain. Okay, so our gain, uh, R, is a resistor that goes between R plus and R minus. So there's two pins. Um, R plus R minus, you put a resistor there, that sets the gain. A single resistor sets the gain according to this equation, which is built into this particular chip, the AD623. And there's lots of other uh, instrumentation op amps available for you to use, like the INA series, but just ma make sure that you look at their data sheet to figure out what their equation is for the gain. They're all a little different. <clears throat> okay, so um, the voltage that goes across our body when we're looking at this kind of circuit is very small you know it's on the like the microvolt level so from here to here might be a microvolt at any given moment um so what gain should we pick here 
is decided by what kind of voltage we're trying to get at V out, as well as um, the capabilities of this chip. So for this particular chip, the 8623, it has kind of a natural low pass filter built in, not on purpose, but because it can only amplify so much. So uh, keep the gain uh, to like 100 or less. If you try to go above 100, it starts to add its own natural low pass filter. Um, we don't want to do that until we add our own specific low pass filter. So uh, on this first stage, keep the gain relatively small, like 100. So we're still only going to be getting millivolt level signals out of the gain. Then we'll have to take this signal and then amplify further. Um, now the voltage across our chest is going to be wandering and drifting. So the relative amount between plus and minus um, is going to have our heartbeat signal on top of it, but there'll be a very slow sine wave or something underneath it, uh, which you can consider either high frequency or low frequency, probably both noise. Um, so that's where you can uh, adjust what the mean is, either by uh, controlling ref or by adding filters afterwards. So for our ref, we're going to initialize it with uh, ground so that we're, we're really just not using this after effect layer. But in a future lab, we might play with that. Okay, so the ref pin is grounded, plus minus five, our left and right electrodes um, are R plus R minus to R for our gain, and then V out, we can look on our end scope. Um, the last thing uh, is that you should be grounded for this um, because uh, the plus and the minus here will be a couple microvolts um, relative to each other, but the whole thing, your body is kind of drifting relative to the world. Um, so to make sure that um, you don't drift too far away, we want to ground your body. Uh, typically, this is done on the ankle, but I'm actually going to cheat. I'm going to do it on my elbow here. You should do it on your elbow, too. Let's just make it a little easier. Okay, let's uh, switch over to the end scope. Um, well, before we do that, let me talk about how we're going to be using these electrodes. Here are some electrodes. I gave you six in your kit. You'll be using three for this lab and then three for next week's lab. Um, so the ones that you're using today, you'll probably have to put back on these pads because we're going to want to use them again on Wednesday. Don't reuse these lab, these electrodes, because then you won't have any for next week's lab, which is on EMG. Okay, so you can take those off and you can apply them to uh, your wrist. And you want to aim for an area of your body that doesn't have much muscle, because the muscle also adds an electrical signal. And we're not interested in that right now. That'll be next week for EMG. So I kind of got the, the squishy part of my wrist and the bony part of my elbow. Um, so this will be left and right electrode and my elbow for ground. And the way we make the connections for those to the end scope is using alligator clips. So these wires, and you got three random colors. Um, and if you squeeze them, the alligator draws open. And so you can grab onto uh, these um, uh, buttons that are on the end of your electrode. And then on your end scope, you can have a cut and stripped wire that you grab on and plug into your board. So that's how you make the connection to the end scope using alligator clip. Um, one warning about alligator clips, though, is that they are notoriously poorly manufactured. Not poorly manufactured, just kind of unreliable. So the wire that connects from here into the metal piece of the, of the grippy part of the alligator is what they call press fit. So they stripped the wire and then they uh, clamped it or cinched it in between two pieces of metal here. They didn't solder it. Solder joints are kind of weak, um, so they could break. But this is maybe even a worse way of doing it by clamping down on here they just didn't clamp very hard. So occasionally I've seen these inside where um, the clamping part goes on the insulation and not the metal, and there's no electrical connection between these two. And that's a real big headache when you're assuming that these wires are continuous on the inside. So the first thing I always do before I use an alligator clip is I turn on my, uh, my multimeter onto uh, continuity mode, which is the one that looks like a um, musical signal and a diode. So this is also the diode test mode, but in continuity mode, uh, if you just touch two ends, the multimeter beeps. And so what I want to do is I want to test to make sure my uh, uh, alligator clip is continuous. So I'll clip both ends to the multimeter in continuity mode. It should beep. And if I jiggle the wires, it should continuously beep. Very annoying. But it shouldn't not beep or be beeping on and off uh, because that would tell you that your alligator clips may not be continuous. So first, check all of your alligators. Um, then you can build the first stage of the circuit um, and take a look at V out on the end scope. So I'm going to show you what mine looks like. After I clip myself back in, this always gets a little tangly. Okay. 
So let's go to our end scope plot. Uh, the big amount of noise that you see there, that's when I wasn't plugged in at all. And so this is just kind of a high gain system that when there's no signal plugged in, um, we see a lot of noise. But now I'm plugged in and the signal's pretty small. We don't really see a heartbeat. I'm going to uh, zoom into maybe like 100 millivolts. And this is the signal coming from the instrumentation op amp. Don't really see a heartbeat, but I can kind of every once in a while, maybe once a second, see a big spike. The reason for the huge amount of noise on here is that my laptop is plugged into uh, the charger right now. So it's coupled to the world, which in the US is covered in 60 hertz noise because the AC frequency in the wall is 60 hertz. So now I've unplugged the charger from my laptop. Now we can see it's still kind of fuzzy. So there's still some 60 hertz in there, but I see a much stronger peak once per second. So this is a good indication my circuit's working. It's not hitting plus and minus five volts because I'm grounded. Um, I can see a peak and I can almost see the, you know, the peak QRST kind of in there under the noise, but we'll, we'll add filters later to amplify it better. Just make sure you're uh, not plugged into uh, your charger while you're doing this. And let me give you another reason for doing that related to safety. I unclip myself. So here's the dangerous situation we're, we're putting ourselves in here. Our left and right electrodes are attached to our body across our chest. And the goal of, with all of our electronics is never put any current from one hand to the other hand, because that means it has to go through your chest. And if you interfere with the electrical signal on your heart, you could stop your heart or cause uh, defibrillation, you know, different uh, uh, styles of electric pulses in your heart that may mean that it doesn't pump effectively. So when we add electrodes to our body that conduct really well, we want to be extra careful that we don't actually apply any voltages to the left or right electrodes, because that would mean we could get some current through our body. So um, the uh, instrumentation op amp works like any other op amp. It doesn't let any current in or out of the op amp. But let's just say, what if the op amp failed? So somehow it might attach uh, five volts to one side and negative five volts to the other side. So we could put 10 volts across our body here. Um, we want to make sure that doesn't happen. The way the instrumentation op amp might fail is that the end scope fails. And the end scope might fail because your computer fails and your computer might fail because it's plugged into the wall. Um, so it, let's say you get your house gets struck by lightning while these are on. And that big voltage uh, spike goes from your house through the voltage converter, your AC to DC converter in your laptop, through your laptop's motherboard, through the USB, through the end scope, fries this chip and then hits you. So another reason not to be plugged into the wall. Uh, while we're doing this. But the main the main problem is that when you are plugged into the wall, uh, your charger is directly connected to 60 hertz AC power, and that's making all kinds of noise that on this high gain amplifier we will see. So uh, don't be plugged into the wall with your laptop while you're doing this experiment. Okay, so after uh, we have done um, our electrodes into the instrumentation amplifier, the goal is that we have a uh, PQRST curve, but you might see yours drifting up and down. So the idea here is that um, we want to know what are the frequencies inside of uh, these curves before we design a high pass filter so that it stops drifting, and then an amp, and then a low pass filter, kind of like all the other uh, um, circuits that we've been building so far. So let me show you some data that I've already collected. So here is, um, so I used the CSV method to collect this data. I, I uh, used a single on the end scope and I uh, waited for 10 seconds to collect this data. So this is raw from the instrumentation amp and I set it to the 100 millivolt setting. So you can see there's a little bit of drift going on. Uh, we're gonna try to fix that with our high pass filter. We can see these big downward spikes. That must be the big spike uh, the PQR, the, the R downward spike is uh, these big downward spikes. And then we see some noise on top of it. Um, to figure out what our amplification factor should be, our high pass, low pass, let's take an FFT of this raw signal. So here's the exact same signal again, and here's the FFT on a linear, uh, linear scale and a log log scale. Um, the things that we can see, well, we expect our heart rate to be really low in the one hertz area. So the log log is more interesting here. So here's the one hertz area down here. Um, and we see, you know, there's signals going on. 
There's also some kind of mean. Um, so we want to remove this mean with a high pass filter. So we'll set our high pass somewhere around one hertz. And then our heartbeat is definitely not going faster than uh, 10 hertz. So we'll set a low pass initially at like 10 hertz and we'll try to keep only this area. And we see that it's in the millivolt range. So we'll try to have a gain of, let's start with a gain of 100 and go from there. Other uh, spikes you can see here that are interesting. We've got a spike at 60 hertz and a spike at 120 hertz and then other spikes at roughly every 60 hertz. So those are the harmonics coming from the 60 hertz from the wall. Here's uh, the same exact data I took, but with my computer plugged in. We can't see the peak RST curve and we see a lot of noise. So what do we expect? Look at that huge spike at 60 hertz on our FFT. So that is noise. And we could have tried to remove it with a low pass filter, but it's so huge compared to any other signal in our signal um, that let's remove it first by unplugging our laptop so we're not connected to the wall at all. Now we end up with a much smaller spike at 60 hertz that we can remove with a low pass filter. Okay, so uh, I kind of picked a high pass, low pass, and gain. So I built that. Here is my raw signal again. I took some more data. And we can see there's still some drift. This is straight out of the instrumentation op amp. Here's, the same, here's that signal after the high pass filter. So I was able to remove the drift, but it's still noisy. And then finally, the red signal is the raw signal amplified. And one bad thing about this is that I did let it clip. If you could see that my gain's a little bit too big here, I don't really want to hit plus and minus five volts. Um, but I, I tried to make it as big as I could um, because then after the low pass, I got this blue signal. And if I zoom in on um, two of these spikes, this is inverted. So probably if I flip the electrodes to my left and right hand, or really the wires that go to them, um, but we see here's a P, Q, R, S, and then this big fat one is T. Um, so again, here's a P, a Q, an R, an S, and a big fat T. So uh, go ahead, try to build this circuit. Um, start with your uh, electrodes into the instrumentation op amp and just read that signal, take an FFT of that. Then you can choose your high pass uh, gain and low pass, build those, um, and then adjust from there. Uh, if you smooth too much, you'll lose the sharp peaks. Um, so we don't want to lose the sharp peak. So some base level noise here you can see I've kept in because I didn't over smooth it. Uh, we'll, we'll accept that as, you know, that's background noise we don't want to remove because then if we did remove it, it would also probably penalize this nice sharp peak here. 